Hello everyone, welcome back to another video with me, Nikki, where you get to sew with me. Um, I teach you real-time tutorials, if you haven't found my channel before. The real-time tutorials are things that you can use around your home, you get to sew things for friends, gifts, things like that. But I walk you through step by step um, so that you get to learn how to do it, you know, in real time. Okay, so today I am going to be working on um, an item that was requested. Um, so over the next few videos, I'll be answering those needs for you. Okay, so today this item was requested, a video on this. This is one of my favorite things actually. So it's a um, cover for, a hand cover for the cast iron skillet. Um, but it's not only that, I'll tell you about that in a little bit. Okay, so let's get started. Today, you are only going to need simple materials, okay? Dig into that scrap pile. You wanna get um, some fabric, outer fabric, an inner lining fabric, an inner lining piece, and you're going to need some Insulbrite. If you don't know what Insulbrite is, go take a look at my videos about what is interface. That's the title of it. And it teaches you about different interfaces um, for projects. This here, you're going to need Insulbrite. This is on that video, if you don't know. Okay, so the other things you're going to need, you're going to need um, basics. Get that chopstick. Hopefully you guys got your chopsticks already, free chopsticks. Get a seam ripper. Um, if you don't have snippers, that's fine. Get some scissors. You're going to need scissors, pins. Um, I am only going to use my ruler just to show you what the measurements are so that you have them. Okay, so your pieces of material, your outer lining, your inner lining, and that interface, you want them all the same size, and they measure six, okay, by five, six by five, okay, all of them, same sizes, same measurements, okay, so five by six, six by five, okay. And what we are going to do is we are going to create this. I inherited my dad's cast iron skillet when he passed. And he used to use regular oven mitts. But of course, um, some schnazzy sewing people came up with this idea. So that's pretty cool. The Insulbrite inside of this, what it's going to do, it's going to keep that heat from the pan, the heat from the skillet, um, iron skillet, it's gonna keep it trapped inside of here. So that when that handle is inside, it's almost sort of like the oven mitt um, or a, um, the, pot, the, pot, the pot handles when you're holding them. Your hands are not going to get hot, okay? Because of what's inside of here, okay? Um, so let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, you're going to layer your outer material with the Insulbrite. That's it, that's all, that's what, you're doing. that's what you're doing there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the lining fabric, you want to put pretty side to pretty side. If you're using a solid color, um, just, you know, just know which is your um, good side and which is your bad side. Okay, and just layer them. So bottom you have the interface. Oh, sometimes with interface, um, you might not see the actual foil because they started changing it. Um, I noticed when I went to get new interface um, from Joann's. If you don't see that shiny aluminum, it's fine. Just make sure that you have Insulbrite, okay, um, for this interface. Um, but it can be shiny side up or shiny side down. You just have to pay attention to what the directions say on the pack that you're using. Okay, so we have that interface, we have the outer, and then we have pretty sides of both that are going to touch each other. All right, head over to your machine, and what you're going to do is put your stitching on 3.0. You want it on 3.0 because we are sewing through the um, Insulbrite, which is a little thick, okay? I use this when I'm making lunch bags as well. Um, and then I use um, the rip stop and the fabric. So when I'm sewing through multiple layers, 
I love 3.0. 2.5 is way too small for, I think, anything. <laughs> okay, because of the thickness. All right, so what I'm going to do, what we're going to do is we want to sew, okay, straight across the line for the five inch line, okay, the five inch side. You see that? Not the six inch, but the five inch across, that's the one we're doing. We're going to sew one straight line across, okay? You wanna go about a quarter of an inch seam allowance, okay? Okay. <laughs> if you need to, go ahead and pin these to keep them together, okay? Remember to backstitch. So when you start, if you don't know what the back stitch is, when you put, when you turn on your machine, if you're using like the Electronic Brothers, it will automatically back, back stitch for you. I like to go ahead and do it again. All right. I'm all about extra stitches so your things don't fall apart. So I'm lining up my um, foot right here with the edge of my fabric and I'm just sewing across. And again, I am on 3.0. That's all. And now I'm going to take this out. Okay. What I love about this is I love matching things. So once you do learn to do this, then you can go ahead and take a look at the video for the pot holder. You can do some matching things for your kitchen. <laughs> okay. So now what we want to do, this is up. Okay. So simple. All we're going to do is fold this over like this. Fold over. Okay. Do a little finger press there, fold it over, finger press. And I do want you, okay, just make sure everything is lined up, everything is great, all right? Sometimes when you turn things, things shift. Put your seams just together to, together to make sure that you actually have your fabric even when you fold it, okay? What I want you to do is I do want you to pin this now because, you know, as beginners, this might be a little bit thick for you to hold on to. Okay, so go ahead and pin that, you know, to hold in place. If you need to pin this portion, go ahead. I'll pin it for you. <laughs> All right. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start sewing at the bottom here. We're going to sew across. We're going to sew down. You're going to stop in the middle. Okay leave some space here okay let's see i have fat fingers guys <laughs> either two or three fingers okay so from right like right here okay leave some finger space because you want to turn it the right way okay <laughs> and then continue sewing from this portion all the way down you're going to take your time when you go over this because you're going over multiple layers so all the way down all the way down and around okay all right let's do it Okay, you can sew at a quarter of an inch seam allowance, but not one eighth. Mm -hmm. What I am doing is I'm lining up my fabric this time, instead of with the edge of the foot, I'm lining it up with my second guide marker there. Um, you'll get to know what you want. You'll get to know, you know, how you like to sew with your, with your seams. Okay, I pivoted, so I'm lifting up and I'm turning. This is where I'm going to stop. I'm back stitching. We're going to leave that space so that we can turn. Um, we're going to leave the gap there so that we can um, turn this right side out. Okay, and so I'm going to start sewing around right here. Okay, remember to back stitch when you start again. Okay. And now we're going over the insole bright. So go ahead and you're gonna push it through. Okay, so mine goes through with no problem. But if you have a problem with it going through, push this black button if you need to go over a lot of thick layers. Okay, that spring. Mm -hmm. And down I'm stopping before I get to the end and turning mm -hmm. okay all right 
So now you can remove the pins. Remove the pins there. This is where you want to clip your corners. Okay, so here's another thing as well. If you wanted to, you can actually sew this so that there's a curve, okay? You decide that obviously before you start sewing. I should have said that, but you can decide if you want to sew it um, with the circle at the end. Um, and if you do, then you're just going to, um, you know, cut it before you actually sew cut both sides of it so that they're even. But I like leaving mine rectangular. It's just easy. Um, when I'm making a bunch of these that I use at my vendor spot, it just helps save a little bit of time. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm cutting close to the edge because we wanna get rid of the bulk when we turn this the right way. Okay, so clip off a tiny bit. Okay, I'm going down to the bottom. I'm going to clip my corners here. Ah, oh, what the heck, I'm gonna clip that too. <laughs> okay, and so now what we wanna do, just so that you guys don't have to see this mess underneath it. <laughs> okay, so now what we wanna do is, um, take your fingers, you actually wanna dig in here, okay? We wanna dig in here, put your fingers all the way down to the end. This may seem a little tough, but you can do it, trust me, it's not bad. All right. So, what I'm doing is I'm pushing through, I'm gonna get my chopstick, and on the flat end, I'm gonna use my chopstick, because like I said, I have fat fingers. Not afraid to tell you guys that. <laughs> I'm pushing this through, <laughs> okay? Pushing it through. So, and the reason I use the flat end of the um, chopstick is because I don't want it to, if I use this, I don't wanna poke through that wonderful, gorgeous sewing seam that we just did. All right, so I'm pushing this in, just getting my corners out, poke those corners out, okay? Going like this to get the seams there. And all I'm doing is pulling this through. Go ahead and turn your liner right side as well. Poke those corners so that you make sure you got everything inside of there. All right, so fold it over. Let's close up this raw edge. So close up that hole, okay? This, when you're closing up the hole, you can go really close to your edge. You can go 1 8 of an inch, okay? You don't need to use a whole big seam allowance. The reason, the reason that we like to do on the inside quarter of an inch seam allowance is because when you turn that when you turn that um, that product that you're making, when you turn it right side out, snip your stuff while well. <laughs> I'm just um, I'm snipping the threads as I talk to you. When you turn that final project right side out so that you have the lining, the reason we do on the inside um, the wider seams is so that those ends will naturally fold in. Um, and make it easy for you to sew this right here. You know, otherwise, if you did a smaller seam, it would be hard for you to fold in those edges together. All right, and guess what? <laughs> You're done. That's it. This is like the best scrap project ever. Stick that lining inside. All right, stick it in there. Again, I'm gonna get the chopstick, or you can just stick it on your pot and do it. Look at that. This is such an amazing scrap buster. I love things you can do with scraps because you don't have to actually throw them away. Okay, so I wanna tell you something else. Ha <laughs> ha. So what I love, what I've learned from people that I know, right, I've made these so many times. And so my customers, you know what they like to use these for? I'll tell you now. They love to use these if you're traveling, right? So you can put fun designs, pretty designs, whatever you want to, you know, whether they're food, um, whatever your theming is in your kitchen, whether it's coffee or anything. But um, <laughs> I'll tell you, you can use these, um, like I said, my customers have purchased them to use them for like their hot curlers when they're traveling. They love them. 
Um, so, you know, the hot part of the hot curl or the wand, whatever you're using, so the handle will stick out. But, you know, when you do your hair right before you're leaving out, you can stick that hot curler in this and it will protect, you know, your hands or when you put it into your bag. So the other favorite thing they love it for is they love it for reading glasses. <laughs> so I know it sounds crazy and I tell them there's insulin right in there, but they love them. The older people love them because the, um, the glasses are really small and snug and the padding actually protects their glasses instead of having those really, really big, you know, eyeglass um, pouches. So if you find that you want to make them longer, you know, for let's say the hot curler pouch, you can just make them taller instead of making them, you know, six. Remember, we made them five by six. You can make them five by eight if you want to. If you go over to your pan and if you realize, so you see this, notice my difference is one inch difference because I have two size cast iron pans. So don't worry about this one. Um, I have a small one and I have a large one, but um, you can play with the measurements yourself. Okay, so keep it at five because the handle is not thick, but the height of it, you can change it if you want to. This is six. If you want for, um, you know, anything else, you can go seven or you can go eight. Okay. So make it five by eight or five by seven. All right. So, um, that's about all guys. <laughs> scrap busters. Don't throw away your scraps because they are so awesome to use with so many other projects. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Like I said, I'm going to be doing a few different videos for um, that were requested and um, you can hit the subscribe button so that you can actually get a chance to see them. Um, let me know questions, comments. All right. Um, you can check out my social media from um, from the bottom, you know, in the links there. I'm on Instagram. I'm on um uh, Facebook, you can join the new Facebook group. Um, I tend to get on there and it's easier for me to answer questions. So you can go on to um, sewing, it's on Facebook, Sewing Made Easy with Nikki. You can join that group, okay? Or um, see me on Facebook, um, I mean Instagram, Instagram. My Instagram is um, Sewn by Nikki, okay? So um, otherwise, look down in the comments below. Um, eventually, I'm going to update my blog too so that you guys can get pattern sizes. You can grab that link from in the bottom. <laughs> and um, that's about all for now. So I'll see you for the next video. Thanks for stopping by.